Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the Double Degrees with Education session. Uh, for those of you who are here today with us, welcome. For those of you who are online, welcome to our live streamers as well. Um, this particular session is specifically on our Double Degrees with Education. Um, so we'll go through um, some of the course information, how to apply, pathways into the course, and then we have some of our alumni who did a double degree, as well as our current students, and they'll share their experience, and you'll have an opportunity to Q&A as well, so ask them a few questions about their experience. So firstly, we just wanted to say welcome to the Learning and Teaching Building. Um, so this, is, this building is fantastic. The name was quite appropriate for education. Um, and as you can see, this is where the double degree students study. Um, so in this particular building, with the exception of fine art. So if you're thinking of a double degree with fine art, you would study your education studies here and your fine art degree at Caulfield. Uh, but all other degrees will be taught here. Um, the thing that's unique about this particular space and the building is you can see it's quite, it's about collaborative learning. So you'll be working with teams um, and it really prepares you for working in the workforce as well because there is a lot of teamwork and collaboration. So all these spaces are fantastic. So if you do get a chance, have a little tour of the space as well. Definitely recommended. So three ways to become a teacher at Monash. The first step is a Bachelor of Education Honours. It's a four-year course, and we've got specialisations in early childhood, primary, primary and secondary, inclusive education, health and physical education. Um, you can find out more about these specialisations at our course information stands. We want to focus particularly on the second option. So it's the same Bachelor of Education, four years course, but you can get two degrees in four years. So once you graduate, for example, you graduate with a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Education um, and Science and so forth. So we'll just focus on that one for now, but we'll touch on the third one. So some people are not quite sure just yet. So you might finish year 12 considering teaching, but not yet convinced of it. <laughs> so some students might go and do a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Music and then come back to us and do a Master of Teaching after that. So they are different pathways. Double degrees. So if you're interested in primary education or if you're interested in teaching secondary school students, you can double your degree. So you can do an arts and education degree, you can do a business education, fine art, music and science. Um, so how we describe is, is you, you learn the discipline content in your second degree. So you'll learn the discipline in the science degree or the arts degree and then we teach you how to teach that. So you're studying it concurrently at the same time. I'll show you this one. So this is an example of primary education and visual arts. There's a lot of information on that screen. Um, but for you, what you need to know is the blue is actually your partner degree. So in this case, it's visual arts. The pink here is your professional placements. So all students will complete placements in schools we have a dedicated professional experience office that will organise the placements for you, so you don't need to worry about that. In total, you complete 80 days of placements throughout the course, so there's placements every year. And then the green and the yellow as well are further education studies, so you learn how to develop inclusive classrooms, for example. You learn about English, numeracy, um, all that inf important information that you need to know. And here's an example of one of our most popular double degrees, a double degree with arts and education. So as you can see, very similar. You're studying your arts units in the blue and then you're doing your education units as well. You can ask questions about this course map um, after the presentation as well. So within the arts degree, if you're interested in secondary, you have to be a subject specialist teacher. So whatever you choose to major or minor in in your arts degree, that's what you'll teach. So you need to qualify for two subject areas. So for example, if you major or minor in English, you'll be able to teach English. So there's a whole list of options in your arts degree, and I definitely recommend that you go and speak to the Faculty of Arts as well. Um, so you could be an English and history teacher, for example, or legal studies and psychology. Business qualifies you for accounting, business management and economics. 
fine art, those are the options. So you'll be a visual arts teacher and you can also do things like drawing, jewellery, painting, photography, printmaking or sculpture. And then there's music in education. So you can do music performance, composition, popular music um, as well. Science. So there's a great demand for maths and science teachers in Australia. Um, so this is a really good option. So you can qualify for chemistry, maths, um, geography, biology, and they're all listed there. Psychology is also offered within a science degree, or you could do psychology within a Bachelor of Arts as well. Oh, that was quick. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, but on that note, I'll just like to invite our alumni, Linda, um, and she'll just share her experience about its arts education. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. I'm a little bit nervous, considering I'm always in front of a classroom, but that's okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Linda, and today I'll be talking about my Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Education degree. So I am an English and EAL trained teacher, so that means I can teach English as an additional language, as alongside English, literature, Englang, whatever languages incorporates. I'm in my fourth year of teaching. Um, I did a double degree, so Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Education. I completed my arts degree in 2014, and I completed my education degree in 2015. And that's a picture of me and my friends, really excited that we graduated. Um, Yes. So from first year to graduate, my Bachelor of Arts degree was really fun. I started that in 2012. My major is linguistics and my minor was literature. Uh, it really gave me an opportunity to develop my passion for language. Linguistics was particularly fun as it's kind of looking at the science behind language or English. So that was really good. Arts was great as it gave me more insight and it supported me with my education degree. So if I did I don't know, Australian literature and arts, that was a really good way to kind of complement if I was doing a literature unit in education. Uh, my Bachelor of Education degree, I started that also in 2012. My specialisations were English and English as an additional language. Um, English specialisation came from literature and my EAL specialisation came from linguistics. Placements was amazing and that was one of the best parts of my education degree. Now, you don't only get sent to a secondary school or primary school. I had the opportunity to work at the Ronald McDonald House for placement and that was amazing. So we're really exploring teaching in all different types of context and um, environments. Um, I was also involved with the Education Ambassador Program and now that's something you guys should really consider. It's a lot of fun. You're working with other education students to support each other, to connect with one another and really make uni um, a fun, I guess, four years for you if you're doing the double degree. The Education Academic Team at Monash are also very knowledgeable and insightful, so if you ever get stuck, they're there to support you. That's a picture of me with the, I think, previous dean, yep, yeah. Professor John Loughran, um, a lot of fun. Now, this is me in action, okay? I think some of my students are here, so quick hello to my, my, my students. Uh, I teach various year levels around across the schools. I've been in private sectors, I've been in the state sector. Um, yes, so year 10, 11 and 12 EAL, I've had a few years of that and then now I'm teaching year 7, year 9 and VC English. We're trying to get through Streetcar Named Desire, if any of you have read that, um, but it's, yeah, a lot of fun. Um, Postgrad, so now I'm back at Monash for more. I really, really enjoy that Monash offers us Masters of Education and I'm actually specialising in expertise in teaching. But given time constraints, a little bit more about that next time. I just wanted to say thank you and good luck. Thank you. Okay. So I'd now like to invite Louise Taylor, who is also an alumni, um, and she'll share her experience about her course and what she's doing now. So thanks, Louise. No worries. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. I'm so happy to see you all here. Far out. Could you put more people in this room? This room is full of people. Anyway, um, my name is Louise Taylor. I currently work at ANZ. Um, I do work in a teaching capacity. I'll get to that shortly. Um, what I'd like to show you today is a little bit about me. And they've said to me, keep it less than five minutes. I love to talk, but let me talk you through it. So I was like some of you when I was at school. And when I was in year 11, I remember coming along to Open Day and I really liked commerce at school. I was studying accounting and business management 
and I'd always wanted to be a teacher, but it got to about year 11 and I thought, oh, I really like these subjects. Perhaps I'll see if I can do both. And so came along to Open Day and found out you can actually do a Bachelor of Commerce at the time, now called Bachelor of Business, and Bachelor of Education at the same time. And I thought, great, that's what I want to do. So then I went back to school, did a few exams, had a few secs, there you go, InterScore came out, eight are for you now, but InterScore for me, came out and then I got an offer for my actually I thought, you beauty. Anyway, came along to uni and I was one of those people who couldn't sit still. So what you see sitting above my lash there was everything I decided to do in my four years before I graduated and then did what was below Monash on the screen. So let me talk you through it. When I was in my four years here at Monash, I was working at Baker's Delight, so I actually ended up working there part-time. And then I also worked at a bakery called Eight, so that was just another bakery happened to be in Bellwood. Um, next to that, you'll see Sienna College. So I actually worked there at the same time as working at Baker's Delight. And I was working there as an IT assistant. So what I was learning at uni while I was studying Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Education, I could actually apply there because at the time, iPads had just come into the classroom. And teachers were saying, OK, great, how can I integrate this into learning? Because I have to use it because we've got government funding to get the iPads in the school. Anyway, so that was part of my job and it was really good there to work in a classroom setting without being a teacher while studying. Embrace education, well I did a little bit of volunteering on the side, so underprivileged students who are at secondary school needing a bit of help, so I had students who I one-on-one -on -one tutored there. And then as you can kind of tell, I didn't have enough um, things to do with my time, so then I decided to get another job. So I got a Christmas casual job at Suzanne, worked there at the same time as Sienna, at the same time as Baker's Delight, and kept myself very busy. Now. I was also here studying. And whilst I was studying, I would say, can you do 20 hours of work? Maybe some weeks, not all the time. But I would also say it gave me plenty of workplace experience, which was super important for when it actually comes to going on placement. So when you go on placement, you get put in front of a classroom with about 10 to 20 kids, depends, some 30 kids. And your first experience for me was primary school reading a story and I was terrible at it. But I still remember that the teacher said, you know what, good job. And then she proceeded to read the whole story to them again, but with animations. <laughs> And I thought, oh, I'm not sure if that was really a very good job. But anyway, from there on, I went on a few different placements. I went off to Kerry, which was my last placement. And I had a great time there. And the good thing about the placements, like the team have mentioned, you don't organise them yourself. You just get the card you're dealt. And it was great to go off to Kerry because I'd never worked in private sector. And prior to that, I'd worked at Danny Nong High. Um, sorry, been on placement at Danny Nong High. And just to see the stark difference in students and motivation. So... You get really good exposure there. The next thing I'll talk about is the ambassador program. So at Monash, the business faculty had a leadership program there for business. And I love getting involved in that because that was about preparing you for employment. Then the next thing you'll see there is ESA. That's the Student Association for the Education Department. And I was one of the first ambassadors there. And that's actually where I met Linda. So we've known each other for a few years. But through that program, we'd volunteer at Open Day and help with student, um, student events. And so it was really good to learn things that, you know, you don't learn in your everyday course. So fast forward, what do I do now? So I work for ANZ at the moment. I'm a facilitator and learning expert. So what does that mean? I run training for not this many people, but for about 16 to 20 people. And I also develop learning content for those people. So that can mean PowerPoints, it can mean slides, it can mean webinars, it can mean all kinds of things. So I've got a few photos for you here on the right. You can see me there doing some training with our Bangalore team. Down the bottom, a couple of examples of how we use learning in our environment. And then, of course, that's me. No, I'm kidding. It's not me. But that's a stick picture of one of our um, teams we were drawing on a team day. So I hope that what I've told you today has been somewhat interesting and if not informative and all the best with choosing your career path. The other thing I just want to mention is that... Um, it is not all going to be perfect. And so did I fail all my units? No, because I'm standing here now. But I failed one along the way. And so I'd say it's all right. You're going to have speed bumps and hurdles. But at the end of the day, you'll be successful as long as you stick your mind um, towards your goal. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, and that's a really good example because often people think teaching, it'll lead to a career in the classroom. Not always the case. And that's one of the benefits of a double degree. Um, so there's learning and teaching happening at various organisations. Um, an example with science, um, we've got students who go on placement to a museum um, because they're developing educational programs in a museum. So there's definitely a lot of examples about where teaching can take you outside of the classroom. Now for the fun stuff. <laughs>
is it really? <laughs> no. How do I get into the course? Um, so double degrees, because it is two degrees at the same time, the ATAR is higher than our single degrees. So the minimum ATAR is around 85 plus. Um, there is um, special entry access schemes called Monash Guarantee and CEASE. I'd recommend chatting to our colleagues outside at the course information stands. That takes into consideration different circumstances that students may face. Um, so the Monash Guarantee, as an example, is 70. So please talk to our colleagues outside. VCE prerequisites. To get into an education course, it's usually units one and two, year 11 maths, and units three and four English, a study score of 25. If you're doing EAL, it's a study score of 30. Um, CASPA, has everyone heard about CASPA? Yep. So it is a new requirement to see if you have the people skills to become a teacher. So if you think about the people that you need to work with, young children, young people, other teachers, principals, parents, there's a whole number of stakeholders that you have to work with. So we need to make sure that you've got the people skills to be a great teacher. There's a video here that explains it better than I do, which I'll start. The steps you need to take to apply for initial teacher education or ITE courses have changed. Why the change? Anyone can learn, but not everyone can teach. It takes gifted, hardworking people who are just as passionate about inspiring young people as they are about educating them. To help find those people, the Victorian Framework for Selection into ITE has been developed. From 2018, all entry into ITE courses will include a non-academic selection component that measures an applicant's personal attributes as much as their grades or ATAR score. At Monash, this applies to our Bachelor of Education Honours course, including double degrees and the Master of Teaching. Some of the attributes that you'll need to demonstrate include how motivated you are to teach, your interpersonal and communication skills, your willingness to learn, and your organisational and planning skills. To implement this, we'll be using CASPER, an online screening tool designed to assess important personal and professional qualities against the selection framework. Don't worry, we're not changing our academic selection standards. CASPER is an additional admission criteria, similar to how an interview might be used when considering someone for employment. With CASPER, your responses won't be checked for things like spelling and grammar. Instead, you'll be assessed on how well you tackle the ethical and professional situations put forward. There are no right or wrong answers, just answers that reflect you and how suitable you may be for teaching. With the introduction of CASPER, we're making sure that all of our students have the qualities needed to become great teachers. So when you study with Monash, you'll be surrounded by like-minded people who are committed to inspiring young, developing minds. To find out more, head to the website. Okay, so things to note about CASPA is that there's specific dates and times that you have to sit it. So the first thing you need to do is apply for the course through VTAC. Uh, once you do that, you'll get a VTAC ID and you use that ID to register for your CASPA test. The very first test is August 24th, um, and then there's test dates in September, November, December. Um, I'll touch on something else a bit later, but there is an early offer around this year um, where students can receive an offer letter in December. If you do want an offer letter in December, you need to take CASPA by November 17th. So please remember that date. Um, CASPA is a completely online test. So if you get um, an ATAR of 95, as an example, but you don't pass CASPA, we can't make you an offer. It's a hurdle requirement, so you need to meet all the requirements. ATAR, prerequisites, CASPA. Um, we are realistic, so you can put different preferences on your VTAC. Um, so we understand you may put um, other institutions as you, in your preference list. Um, so it's not to say that if you don't pass our CASPA requirement, you might not pass another university's CASPA requirement. So that is still possible. You can always come back to us after. <laughs> so you can transfer back into Monash as well. So there are different pathways and we'll go through that as well. Um, further prerequisites. So if you're interested in a double degree with business, you need to have a higher level maths. 
so units three and four maths. If you're interested in music, there's an audition. If you're interested in science, you need to have done year 12 science, so VCE science subjects. The prerequisites for arts and fine art are the same as our single degrees, so just unit uh, one and two maths um, and unit three and four English. Now, so what if you don't get the 85 and you're still really, really interested in doing a double degree? We do have a pathway um, called the Diploma of Higher Education. So if you have an ATAR of 60 and above, I would highly recommend that you put this pathway on your VTAC preference list. It's a one-year course delivered at Monash. You're in the same facilities. Um, there's no maths prerequisite to get into the diploma, but you can pick up the maths while you're in the diploma. CASPA is not required at the point of admission, but just before you transfer into the bachelor degree, you'll have to do the CASPA test. It provides a pathway into these double degrees, so I highly recommend it. And you don't lose any time. So after you finish the one year of the diploma, you pathway into the second year of the double degree, so you're not losing time. So highly, highly recommend it. Um, another pathway is... If you don't get the minimum 85, you can also think about starting the single degree first. So you might think about starting the Bachelor of Arts first or the Bachelor of Science and then transfer into the double degree after the first year. So also an option. So please keep, there's always a pathway to get you to the double degree. This is what I mentioned um, before. Um, most students will be used to the VTEC offer rounds. Um, usually when you apply through VTAC and if you're successful, you would get an offer in January. This year, VTAC has introduced a December round. So like I mentioned before, if you want an offer in December before Christmas so you can relax, <laughs> please seek CASPA by November 17th um, and you'll be considered for a December round offer. If you don't get an offer for us, please don't change your preference. It might just mean that you're getting assessed for the January round. Um, the courses that we can't consider for a December round are music double degree and the pathway course. Um, those ones you'll get an offer in January. Now, yeah. I'll now hand over to my colleague Jennifer, um, who will be inviting up a student panel, so I might invite you all up, and also our alumni to come back up. And here's your opportunity to ask them any questions you like about their experience. Right. We've got two mics here, so yeah. You can hold one of them and then pass it around. <laughs> right. Um, thank you again for coming. Uh, we got a food house here. Some of you are standing. Thank you. Um, very glad to meet all of you here. Um, we'll do some self-introduction. Not you, because you've already done it. Um, so my name is Jennifer. I'm from the Faculty of Education. Oh. Um, my name's Anya, so I'm in my fourth year of secondary education and fine arts. I'm Ian, I'm also in fourth year, but I'm doing science um, and secondary education. I'm Clara, I'm in my second year of primary education and arts. Uh, I'm James, I'm in my second year of the Bachelor of Arts and Education degree as well. Yeah, cool. Um, thanks. Thank you guys for coming out here and giving us your time. That's very generous of you. Thanks. Um, so I just want to ask you... Uh, alumni and current students, what, why did you get into teaching? What do you love about teaching the most? Oh, okay. Any, anyone can start. Um, I think we all get into teaching because as cheesy as it sounds, we know we can make a difference. We enjoy being in school, possibly, and now we want to come back and give back to the future generation. And for me, it's not about um, getting the kids to get the best A to score. It's about them seeing their own potential because, to be honest, maybe school isn't for, for everybody, but if we can help students see what they're worth and how, how much happiness we can bring to their lives in one small aspect, that's really why I got into teaching. So it gives you that sense of achievement. Yeah, definitely. All right, I'll go. Um, I just like the light bulb moments. I like the moment when I see somebody get it, and I also like the moment when people don't get it, because then I go, oh, hang on, how could I explain that differently? Um, but when they do get it, I go, oh, great, now I can move on to something harder and challenge them. So I like that aspect. 
Um, so I really wanted to get into education because I had um, teachers when I was in secondary school who really saw the worth and value of me personally um, and they were aiming to make me grow not only as a person but as a learner. Um, I think one of the main things we learn at Monash is to encourage lifelong learning and a lot of my teachers really implemented that in me. So when I was thinking about what I want to do with my life, I thought, well, I really want to be that person who can make that impact for someone else. So I wanted to get into teaching to help students discover their passion. So in Year 12, I discovered my passion was biology and the sciences. Um, so I really like getting out into schools and working out with students what they want to do when they leave school and trying to hopefully get them passionate about biology, but not all the time. Um, but I like to, yeah, try and find out what students are passionate about and help them foster that passion. It's probably one of the few professions where you get to really watch where you get to really watch people, oh, awesome, <laughs> where you get to really watch people grow. And originally I was in arts IT and when I transferred over, it's because I really just wanted to be able to look at people every day and be like, okay, so here's how we're progressing now. Uh, I think I was probably the other way around. I was really drawn to the art side of things initially. And um, in high school, I sort of realised um, that I could teach history, I could teach English, that could be a career path for me. Uh, and I got into my first year of the degree and I just really loved it. I loved going on placement. I loved learning about the different skills and sciences behind teaching and learning. And uh, yeah, I've just loved the course ever since. Yeah, so you're getting, you got into the double degree because you love teaching and also there's a particular, a, f a few specific subjects that you really want to teach and you think that you can make a difference in um, bringing out that good out learning outcomes from students, right? Um, and do you find, and this will be from your um, past st student experience, so when you were doing the double degree, did you find that particularly time consuming? Was that really stressful? And for current students as well, um, if you're... Yeah. Um, so I'm doing the arts education double and I have about 12 to 15 contact hours a week. So for those of you in year 12, you probably have about 35 to 38 contact hours a week with every day at school. So it's, a bit, it's quite less um, than what you're used to in year 12. However, you do have a lot more assignments you have to do, you have a lot of readings you have to do, and that's just arts. I know that um, some who do science here on the panel, they have a lot more contact hours because of their labs and their tutes. Um, but in terms of contact hours, you have your tutes and your lectures. You probably have one lecture and one tute a week for education and arts. Um, and then you also have your readings and your assignments that you do, and you also go on placement throughout the year as well. So when you go on placement, um, the workload seems to uh, advance quite a bit. Yeah, so science is a little bit different. Um, we do have more contact hours because we do have our three-hour labs. Um, but the thing I liked about, so I'm in my fourth year, so I'm only doing education at the moment. Um, so I finished my science degree. But the thing I loved about doing science and education at the same time is they were very, very different. And so I was doing uh, two different things in the same day. So I would go to my three-hour science lab and not eat and drink for three hours and then be stuffed and then come to my education classes and we have great fun, have really good discussions. So it was really good having that contrast between different learning experiences. Um, and I didn't necessarily find it stressful or... Um, more time consuming than my friends who are doing single degrees because it's the same amount of work because you just take the electives from your science degree out. Um, and I was just going to add because I've got the fine arts component, um, so my degree was across campus and that can apply for some other people who take on different specialisations. They might have to go to Caulfield for one class kind of thing. Um, I didn't really find the workload too consuming. Um, I think a lot of people I've spoken to today look at it and go, oh, I don't want to have to get a bus to campus and whatnot. But if you just real get on top of your organisation and your time management skills, you'll realise you can actually fit things in quite perfectly. So I know, for example, last year I had an education shoot in the morning that was about for three hours. I had a two-hour lunch break. In that time, I would go get the bus from Clayton to Caulfield. I'd have time to have some food and then I'd have a three hour tutorial with my um, fine arts degree in the afternoon and I'd feel like I've had a full accomplished day. So, you know, if you can handle six hours of school a day, then I reckon you can definitely handle the workload here. Yeah, definitely. And also to add on to what uh, Anya just said, we offer a free shuttle bus service between the Clayton and Caulfield campuses mm -hmm. and they run really regularly throughout semester time so you don't have to worry about, you know, paying for extra um, money for public transport because we offer that for free to our students. All right, so 
as you can tell, I was the one with four jobs at the same time, studying two degrees. So um, I was very busy. The only thing I'd say is placement can be disruptive to your three, two or one job you have. Um, but the most important thing I found was just communicating and having flexible bosses. So pick workplaces where the bosses are flexible and I'd ask that question when you're um, initially higher at being hired or going to a job interview. Nothing to add, what Louise said. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, I'll hold on to it. Um, but uh, did you find that um, with students who are doing the single degree, are they more, do they have more time for social life than you? <laughs> um, I don't think it that, really... qu that question came up in a previous yeah. session. Okay, so yeah. the question was, will I have more time to party with a single degree? <laughs> Your social life. <laughs> I honestly don't think it makes a difference. Um, at the end of the day, you know, you, you're in university, you should be in charge of your own learning, your organisation, your timetable. I didn't have a problem um, doing my double degree and going out for some fun. So, yeah, I think it's yeah. manageable. Yeah, I think time management has been a, th has been a theme in our panel discussions about doing double degrees because you're doing two separate qualifications concurrently and still finishing within four years. It, it is a... a quite a big task. It's, it is challenging, but as long as you plan your studies, plan your workload at the beginning of the semester and try to stick to your plan, then you can Absolutely. have the best of both worlds. Right. Uh, okay, moving on to the next question. So some of you have mentioned that you did um, placement, which on, uh, Monash organized for you. Yes. Um, do you want to mention something about that? Like it started from the first year and how, how did you find your first placement? Were you scared or were you um, super excited? Or? <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. It's nerve wracking at the same time, but it also opens your eyes up to what you want. So I did my first year at a primary school. I'm like, nah, not for me. Absolutely not. So then I went into the Ronald McDonald House where we got to do find our own placement. And I don't know if it's the same anymore, but you got to see teaching in a different context. So I worked with teaching with children who are sick, who might be with families or carers staying at the house. And then when I went to secondary, that was like, yep, yeah, this is my calling. Absolutely, 100%, this is what I want. So yeah, it depends on what you like. I still remember being 19, standing in front of a group of 17-year-olds and thinking, oh, crap. But um, when I was presenting, I still remember they were like, Miss, how old are you? And I was like, none of your business. Let's move on. <laughs> um, so I would say the primary school, I told you the story reading. That's enough for me. Second place that I did was community placement. So I did some work at my local netball club. That was pretty fun. Then I was out at um, Daddy Nong High. That was pretty fun. Hallam. Um, I was over at Caranburn. I'd been all out Eastern, and then I got Kerry, and I was like, oh, I'm in shock because the trend was very similar, just different students and paying a few more fees. So that was very interesting. Um, but I'd say that part was probably the most enjoyable part because that's where you take all this theory, you've read all these stories, you've read all these articles, and you really put it to life mm -hmm. in front of the classroom mm -hmm. and you stuff things up. Like, I'll tell you one more story. I was at Kerry, I still remember, and there was one boy sitting at the bus and he goes, hey, miss, I've actually learned something today. And then his, old, his teacher was sitting on the side and goes, don't I normally teach you things? He goes, no, you're too boring. I like her instead. <laughs> they say funny things. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, uh, I first came into doing... Um, well, I should begin from the start. So I actually did the same degree but at another university just for one year. And at that other university, they didn't offer placement in the first year. And I think that was the main thing that I was kind of spent the whole year being like, do I really want to do this? I don't know. Then I came to Monash and I saw they offered placement in the first year. And I thought, all right, fantastic. This will be the best opportunity to get out and see what it's like. And it honestly changed my, changed my eyes completely because I was like, well, I wish I had done this instead of just wasting a year essentially at another uni. Um, I think it's really beneficial especially because Monash really tailors towards um, not like throwing you in front of them and being like, here you go, teach. Um, the first round that you go on placements, observation purely. So you'll be assigned a mentor teacher and you'll just be pretty much their buddy doing team teaching, watching how they learn, seeing how a full nine to five day pretty much is because, you know, teaching doesn't stop at three o'clock. You've still got more stuff to do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the great thing about Monash is you can do international placements. Um, so I was lucky enough to do an international placement last year in Israel. Um, so it's really, really different. So we can do different international placements here where uh, they teach VCE overseas, but I did one where they did not teach VCE. So it was a completely different curriculum and I was actually at a specialist science school over in Israel. 
Uh, so it was a really good experience to see how they taught over there. Um, and as Melbourne is a really diverse place, uh, a lot of our students these days don't have English as a first language. So it was really interesting to see how to teach these grade three, fours who didn't understand what I was saying um, and had to use pictures and things like that. Um, and also for them to communicate back to me as well. So that was really helped my skills going out on placement in diverse schools um, now. So I really recommend doing international placement. Um, and the best thing is if you're a domestic student, you can put it on your hex as well. We're really lucky to be having a first year placement in Monash. But also another thing is that your first year units are all the same, regardless if you're studying early years, primary or secondary. So if you go out to placement and you think, my gosh, teenagers, never again, <laughs> you can change for second year. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, all of you have had a, like a mix of um, placement experience in different sectors, different kind of schools, and you kind of, you know, you, you got to know what you're really interested in, what your passion really is, and what age group you're more comfortable working with. So that's a really good experience. And that way you start your, you start your career right from year one when you're still a student. How good is that? So that's um, fantastic. Uh, thank you for sharing your stories. Um, so would you recommend um, our students to do rural or international or local placements or it, it does it uh, do or does uh, Monash take into account what students want to do? Um, I was just going to say that Monash does really take into account your preferences when it comes to placement. So um, I am from a rural background and I've had to move to Melbourne. And when I first moved to Melbourne, I didn't actually have a car, I didn't have a way of transport. And suddenly I thought, oh no, I've got placement. How am I going to get there? Um, the placement team here are fantastic. They really take in your preferences. So for example, if you have no way of travel, um, you rely on public transport, you specify that in your placement and they'll actually ensure that you get a school that's easily accessible via train, bus, anything they're not going to shove you out in the depths of the rural city and have no way to get there. Um, as well as taking into your account your preferences, whether you want to try and teach a Catholic school, whether you want to try private sector, you can put options to be like, I'd prefer to try this out. I don't want to try it out. It's up to you. They really, the team here, the professional um, service team, they, they really go above and beyond. Yeah. Um, and as we can see, um, Louise here, you know, she has gone beyond the classroom and has gone into the uh, corporate world and still be able to apply what she learned from her education degree and become a really fantastic, engaging educator in the private sector. So it doesn't have to, you, you don't have to limit yourself within schools if, um, like, after you've done your placement, you realize, oh, okay, maybe I'm more uh, comfortable working with adults and teaching them. So we're all learners here. Everyone can be, can do more uh, learning. So it, learning doesn't have to happen in uh, the classroom. Um, so we have um, students who have gone beyond the, the classroom and the schools and uh, do their education in the private world. Um, so would you have some top tips for our students who are in, still in year 10, year 12 and deciding what they want to do for their uni course? What would be your top tips for helping them making that decision? Um, I say just try it out. So when you come into first year, I know first year science, um, you can have a go at some different things and just see what you like. So I didn't study psychology in year 12 because there wasn't room for it in my um, course map. But then I decided when I came to university, I wanted to try out psychology. So I took the first year uh, psych units and decided I really liked it and ended up doing a minor in psychology. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways you can get into university. You can always swap courses. So I think if you want to do teaching, um, you're thinking of doing a double degree, just try it out. Yeah, cool. Don't be afraid of the Casper. I've taken it twice and I can safely say that all of you can pass it because you're in this room. Because all you need is a mentality of, I want to help people, I want to grow them, I want to see how I can make this situation work, which is exactly what you need to answer. Yeah, so the Casper is not about giving the right or wrong answer, because every, it's about your people skill, and we all approach people differently. We're not machines. We don't approach the situation the same way. Say, so, for example, uh, one of the Casper uh, questions could be, like, you saw two of your colleagues fighting, and one of them, you believe one of them was bullying the other. 
how would you respond and why? So as long as you give your answer and give a reasonable justification as to why you want to approach the situation that way, then it's fine. You know, you don't have to think about, oh, this is, it's going to test to see whether I'm normal or not. It's not about that. It's, it's about how well you can work with people. So you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to fit your answer to the, the, the correct answer. There's no right or wrong. Just be yourself. Be human, basically. It's, it's to test. It's not to test if you're normal, but it's to test if you love being with people. If you love, if you like working with people, because teaching is always, you know, working with people. I just want to add as well. Um, just become aware of what is required for the um, educational side for the degree. So, for example, um, now studying. I think it's from now onwards. So when you start your teaching degree, within the first year, you have to pass a literacy and numeracy test. Um, so while you're in year 10, I said this to a couple of p students that I mentor at other schools. I said, this is a perfect opportunity. There's practice questions online. If you're uncomfortable or you're unfamiliar with certain topics, you're in school now, why not speak to your teachers now? Um, but if you're kind of at that stage where you're like, all right, I'm just going to put that on the back burner, don't stress, because once you get to university, there is a fantastic support system here that we have for the literacy and numeracy, whether we give you a mentor or we give some study sessions. Like, I've had to participate in a couple of them because I was a bit on the edge for that. But um, it, they're quite simple to do. You just need to really be um, aware that it is a first-year requirement. So seek the help now and become informed now while you're young and have the time. Yeah, that's a great advice. Um, probably I'd say when you turn 18, don't go out and party for too long. That's probably my first piece of advice. Practical. Um, just, I think if, fa failing to plan is going to be your biggest downfall. So if you're going to go out and party, that's fine, but make sure you do the work as well. The other thing I'd say is at this point in time, some of you are in year 10, year 11, if you still have no clue or even year 12, don't panic, but don't do nothing. So I'd say come to open days, get online, talk to your teachers. And then while you are going through year 12, if you don't plan out your work and you don't have your allocated time to go play sport or um, socialise and all that, if you're just on the books or the opposite, you don't have a plan, then you are going to fall on your face and you won't end up at one or you won't end up wherever you want to be. So that's probably my two big tips. And yeah, look, when you turn 18, the other thing, oh, sorry, I'll tell you one more thing. And the other thing is, look, you, you can get your licence, yeah, that's fine, but then perhaps don't go out partying and driving everyone around. That's probably my other top tip. It's not personal experience, but it's top tier. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, if, you're, if you're considering teaching, talk to your teachers. Ask them about their stories, their experiences. Have a look at what you're like in the classroom. Have a look at your classmates. You know, you, you put yourself in their situation. You say, can I see myself doing this? And you might say, yeah, absolutely, or God, no. And then you just kind of base it off that. Remember, it's not just within the classroom that you're teaching. It can take you so many different places. So don't think, oh, once I become a teacher, I'm going to get into a school, I'm going to teach for like 20, 25 years, retire. Think about what your education degree really means and where it can take you. Yeah, my tip. That's great. Um, do, you, do we have any questions from the audience? Um, your hex debt. Oh, yeah. Uh, with your hex debt, has it taken long to pay that off or do you pay it off over... 10 years or two I years? I think, well, mine's a little bit higher now because I'm doing my master's, but at that time when you're working, I think it gets taken out by a tax. It was like 220 or something, a fortnight. <laughs> yeah, so you slowly pay it off. I know some friends who've actually just paid it off or paid for the unit up front and done it that way. Mm. Yeah. So not stressful for no. you to um, in the Diploma of Higher Education, does that apply for fine arts as well? Um, session Good question. Um, it is not a, a destination degree as such, which means you can't get the... F it's still a pathway, but you can't necessarily get the full year of credit. So with the other pathways that we had, which was science, business and arts, you can get a full year of credit. With fine art, it might not be a full year. You'll still get the credit. Um, but yes, it's like an unofficial pathway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, more questions? Oh, so many questions. <laughs> run, run, run. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I just want to know, how many places are on offer for that particular program, for the double degree? For the double degree? Yep. Uh, we don't have sort of capped uh, places as such, um, but I can tell you each year we take approximately um, 600 to 700 students into our courses, into education in general. Yep. 
Um, so I was looking at doing a double degree in arts or business with education, but I'm scared because I've spoken to my teachers, like you guys have suggested, um, my business and legal studies and history teachers, and they've all said that it, they've um, noticed that it's harder for teachers with those like um, specialties to get into jobs rather than mathematics and science. So I was just wondering, like, I'm, I'm not unsure if I should study like arts with education or business with education because I'm unsure if I will get a job in comparison to those who apply for mathematics positions? Can I just add, you've got to love what you do. If you're going to do a mathematics degree just because you want to get a job, you're going to end up quitting it because you're like, I hate it. And I wouldn't worry too much about finding a job because if you actually apply... For example, last year um, I applied for 20 jobs. I got five interviews. So it's about being persistent and consistent with your work. And if you keep applying, sooner or later, you will find yourself an interview and a job. Yeah. Or come work in private sector and you'll be all right. Like, it'll be all right. No, I'd say find a job, uh, uh, something you want to say that you're really passionate about and that you're going to be good at. And then you don't just have to think of the classroom as where you end up. Because, yeah, classroom might be one thing, but look, there's plenty of challenges in teaching industry, you know, with contract work and that kind of thing. But you can always find a job in a, in a related industry, whether it be private practice or also government. So, yeah, I say find what you're really passionate about and go for that. The other thing I'd say in my particular discipline, why I went to private as opposed to um, going into a school, is because there's lots of teachers who are quite experienced, particularly in business. So they often go and have their corporate career and come back and teach. And they're the ones you'll be competing against when you're looking for a job. But your strength will be youth, innovation, excitement, all that stuff, compared to their experience, which will be industry knowledge. So sort of toss up which one's most um, interesting to you in terms of your two degrees, and then go for that. Right. Um, we have a live stream question. <laughs> so um, Monash actually has a wide range of scholarships, whether they're access scholarships or merit scholarships. So they're Monash University scholarships that you use. Um, you apply for it when you apply for your VTAC application. So when you submit for VTAC, you can apply for a scholarship. And when I mean merit, um, those ones are based on your ATAR score. Um, and then access scholarships are based on your circumstances. So um, we offer scholarships for students who might have financial disadvantage um, or different backgrounds. So there's, we have one of the largest scholarship programs um, of all universities. So hop online to the Monash website, the scholarships information, and you'll find a lot there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's some questions. Hello. Um, I was wondering what some of the differences are between studying education as a bachelor's degree as opposed to doing another bachelor's degree and then doing a master's degree in education. Well, first of all, it will take longer for you to become a qualified teacher. Uh, so are you year 12? Year, year 12, sorry. Uh, right, so if you're considering teaching as one of your preferred career options, I would recommend that you do the Bachelor of Education double degree because that way you get... Uh, two separate qualifications, your Bachelor of Education, Honours degree, which will qualify you as a teacher, and your other degree. And if you do your, ma uh, your Bachelor uh, in some other discipline, and then Master of Teaching, that will take uh, four and a half to six years to complete, so that will, it will take, you, take longer for you to become a qualified teacher. I also just wanted to add on to that. Um, I'm in my fourth year now for the education and double degree. Um, and two of my units, which are education and fine arts base, I'm actually sharing those units with the masters of teaching students. So um, whilst, yeah, it's definitely, if you're really passionate about one certain area, like feel free to do it as a single degree. But at the end of the day, the double degree, you both end up at the same spot. So I've got a classroom for my education and arts sector where half of the students are from bachelor undergraduates and half of them have already done an arts degree and now they're doing masters of teaching. So no matter what, you're pretty much in the same spot. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to know the difference between studying psychology in a Bachelor of Art and a Bachelor of Science. We actually got that question from a previous session There's as no well. Difference. No difference. <laughs> I did it through science and I did it with friends did it. Um, with arts, it's the exact same thing. You just do it from different faculties. Yeah. And if you enjoy other science subjects, and obviously you'll choose science, if you're interested in humanities, then you'll choose arts. But if you want to further study in psychology, either one will get you there. Yeah. I think we had a question. A few of yeah. them, actually. 
Um, do all education courses provide placement? Yeah, so all education courses have to have 80 days of placement um, to get your VRT, so your Victorian Institute of Teaching registration. Um, the great thing about... Oh dear. Is it working? Yep. Um, the great thing about Monash, as we've said, is you go out within your first year. Um, so you will find after placement, um, some people stop doing education because they realise it's not for them. Um, so the great thing is that you do get to go out in first year and work out what you want to do. And the guy there that was asking, should I do the Masters or should I do the Bachelor? If you're doing a Bachelor, you know straight away from your first year if that's what you want to do. So well, it's really great. It's like the mic. Waiting four years and then doing it. It's on. Oh, it's on. Yeah. Hi, um, just a follow up from the scholarship question. Um, so some universities you apply through the university for certain scholarships, so are all of Monash's scholarships through VTAC? Um, yep, not necessarily, but you are correct. So if you go on the Monash um, website, it'll tell you which ones you apply direct and which ones. Uh, yeah, it's usually the merit base that you apply through VTAC um, and the others, yeah. So the website will outline it all and which ones and how to apply, yep. Hi, okay, so you have two options because I'm, very, I'm a very anxious person, so doing a straight arts degree would make me feel like I'm the stereotypical arts student who's going to very, be very unemployable at the end of this. So when I get anxious because I'm majoring in memes for arts, I think, oh yeah, actually, I can still be a teacher to small children. But when I get frustrated by small children, because that happens, unfortunately, and then I think, I can get paid to make memes. <laughs> and that really helps me sleep at night. Teaching isn't a fallback option. We don't say, oh, then we go into teaching because I've got an arts degree. Yeah. Just putting it out there. Yeah. Um, so there's no requirement to be a subject specialist teacher in primary schools, obviously. Um, so a lot of students that do the double degrees with primary are often just interested in that particular discipline. So you can do any arts? Yeah. Correct, yep, so we won't tell you you need to major in this or minor in this, it's completely up to you. Um, but in from next year, the primary will have an option to specialise in literacy and numeracy or science, or science. Um, so that will be an option from next year within your primary part. Yep. Great. Right. Question? One more question. Um, if you only have a couple of hours of lectures each day but you live far away, can you spend the whole day here, like before and after hours? studying and... Yeah, it's completely up to you if yeah. you want. Yeah. Um, a lot of these spaces are actually open till quite late in the library, so yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. and um, I know if you do science, there's also a 24-7 student lounge, so you can go in there whenever you want, and I think LTB, this is open to like 9pm or something like that. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts of places you can study on campus. There's heaps and heaps of food. Um, yeah, so a lot of people just come in for the whole day if they only have a couple of hours class. And you can also book rooms in the library to go work with friends and things like that. There's tons of spaces on campus to be working, yeah. Yeah, and because this learning and teaching building is so welcoming, we have a lot of students from other faculties <laughs> who also study here. So. The LTB is where you meet lots yeah. of new people and make yeah. new friends. Yeah. yeah, and Clayton Campus actually has its own postcode. <laughs> so it's that big. So we have food outlets. Um, there are food outlets that are open till late, so there will always be something open around. Yeah. yeah. I think there was a we question. We have time for one last question. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm doing the double degree with arts and education. So to qualify to teach uh, history or English, you have to do at least a minor sequence in just the general field within arts. So, for example, I'm doing literary studies, which is uh, the equivalent of year 12 English literature. 
Um, so I just do a minor sequence in that, and then when I get to fourth year, when I pick my method methodology units, I'm able to do those units and then qualify within VIT to teach English. The same can be said for history. Uh, I'm majoring in history, so that means I'm overqualified to do the methodology unit come time for fourth year. So as long as you do at least a major or a minor sequence, then you can do virtually 99% of the methodology units that are available. And to do um, like LOT, so language other than English, you just have to do um, I believe a minor in any language to be able to, pardon? A major. a major, sorry, in any language to be, to be qualified to do that. Can I just quickly add to that? Um, say that you don't do hums or whatever, you're an English teacher. It's also up to your school if you decide to work in a school where your principal might decide, hey, can you teach year seven, eight humanities? So it's school based as well, or dependent, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so if you have any, uh, any more questions, feel free to come out to the course information stands on this level in this building. Uh, and we have academic staff members. You can have one-on-one -on -one consultations with them. And also we got lots of other interesting activities in this building and also across campus. So if you're con especially if you're considering doing double degree, you know, check out the other faculties as well. Um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of open day. Thank you for coming.